السلام عليكم This story has no connection to reality whatsoever especially the ending This is Sir Salah He lived in the Middle Ages He was a wealthy merchant He had a successful trade in fabrics, food, spices and others He was an amazing father He taught his children the importance of justice, sincerity, righteousness and manners And this is the thief The jealous neighbor of Sir Salah He dreamed of being rich but he didn't want to work for it His eyes were always on the money and warehouses of Sir Salah He tried several times to steal money or merchandise from Sir Salah but he couldn't Every time the children of Salah caught him and taught him a very harsh lesson But he didn't give up He kept trying again and again and again and again Sir Salah became old and weak One day his children were on a business trip abroad The thief and his children marched into the house of Sir Salah Murdered him in cold blood and took his life savings and ownership contracts to all of his shops and warehouses A couple of months later, the children of Sir Salah came back from their business trip They found the thief and his children living in their house They found the shops and warehouses managed by them They found the people who were supposed to be their brothers pledging allegiance to the children of the thief They said to the people, didn't our father stand by you all your life? Didn't our father give you charity? Didn't our father help you in every hardship? The thief and his children killed him and stole us. This is our shops. This is our warehouses. Why are you selling us out? One man said, of course I'm on your side. Your father was a great man. But what can I do? I'm only one man and they are so powerful now. Also, they pay my salary. If they cut off my salary, I will have nothing to feed my children. Another man came and said the same thing. I'm on your side, but what can I do? I'm only one man. Then another man came and said the same thing. Then another, then another. Imagine more than 1,000 people in the village saying, I am only one man. What can I do? The children of Sir Salah gave up on the villagers and said We don't need your help We will stand up alone for the thief and his children We will fight until our last breath They did, they fought a lot But unfortunately, they couldn't Then came the next generation The grandsons of Sir Salah They learned everything that happened from their fathers And they fought for their cause with courage but not as hard as their fathers and thus they couldn't then came the next generation who fought but with less power and less faith then came the next generation who started to give up one of them said to his brother we are so weak and poor look at us now and look at the children of the thief They are living in these amazing neighborhoods. Their streets are so clean and safe. Their houses are so big and beautiful. They have successful businesses in everything that we used to work in in the past. Plus, they have these new businesses where they do weapon trade, which is bringing them a lot of money. They even made banks and they can now print their own money. Imagine how wealthy they are. What are we doing, sitting here defending a lost cause? Give up already. Let's go to work for them. Maybe they will give us a good salary. His brother screamed at him. Are you crazy? Work for the children of the thief? Beg them for crumbs of our own wealth they stole from our grandfather? And the wealth that they stole from other people too? or work for them in their haram business selling weapons, getting rich on the corpse of the innocent, or work for their money printing scam that they use to steal money from everyone in our village and neighboring villages too. He said, brother, don't scream at me. All I'm saying is, that is the reality now. 
whether you like it or not. You only choose between dying in poverty or working for them. Let's skip ahead. Let's fast forward two or three more generations. Sir Salah now is a part of history. No one cares about him. The grand, 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 I don't know how many children of Sir Salah changed everything. They dumped everything from their heritage. They started to speak the language of the children of the thief. They started to dress like them, do haircuts like them, do business like them, and even think like them. The one who copies the children of the thief perfectly is considered cool and stylish. And the one who keeps his own heritage is considered lame. And this is the most interesting part. The grandchildren of the thief had every worldly pleasure except one thing. One thing that made them extremely angry every time they thought about. The fact that they were the grandchildren of the thief. They hated that fact. So they decided, you know what? We will change history. We will rewrite the whole thing from the beginning. And the propaganda started. They started saying, this Salah guy is a legend. All the stories about his righteousness, justice, sincerity, and manners, these are all made up. He was a barbaric guy who increased his wealth using the sword. And we, we are the people of goodness who had to stop him. We are not the thieves. We are the enforcers of human rights. We are the source of manners. We are the role models for humanity. Everyone knew they were liars, but people couldn't speak up because those who spoke up either were silenced or marked as intolerant extremists or were completely murdered and destroyed. No one dared to say anything anymore. And the prevailing story in the whole village was that the children of the thief are the good people. This is the only story that our children will grow up learning from now. And 20 years or 30 years from now, this will be the new truth. Well, it will be the new truth, except if people speak up again, or at least open their eyes and see that their criminal acts are not only part of the past, it is still ongoing. It is ongoing right now, but hidden in front of your own eyes. Yes, hidden in front of your eyes. You decide. Salam alaikum.